Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a war, thriller film about a small band of Russian soldiers tasked with delivering the crated remains of Hitler back to Stalin in Russia called, Burial. Spoilers incoming. On Christmas Day 1991 in London, Anna Marshall watches a news broadcast about the fall of the Soviet Union, leading to the resignation of its last president, Mikhail Gorbachev. Her pet dog annoys her to be let out, so she opens the front door. As she continues watching, she hears it bark and calls it back over while forgetting to lock her door. Just then, a masked intruder walks inside and sneaks upstairs. To his surprise, she launches at him with a taser, already aware of his presence. She handcuffs the man, Carl Edwards, to her radiator and notices a string of numbers tattooed on his left arm, a branding from a Nazi death camp. As he tries to break free, he threatens to reveal her true identity as a former Soviet translator and demands to tell him the truth about covering evidence of Hitler's escape. She shows him a locket and blows the contents on his face, rendering him temporarily paralyzed. She then begins to recount the actual events that led to his suspicions. After the Battle of Berlin ended in 1945, Lieutenant Brana Vasilyeva Brodskaya, who is Anna Marshall later in life, is a Russian officer given orders by Joseph Stalin to join a covered operation she had been dreading for a while. The process involves immediately transporting a crate full of the remains of Adolf Hitler by reaching the nearest train station. After loading the box in the truck, she and a handful of Soviet soldiers drive deep into the woods. To ensure the safety of their cargo, they must bury it every time they camp out to rest since the journey will take a very long time. At night, Mikhail Tor Ivanovich speaks to Brana by the campfire about the origins of each other's given names. By morning, they dig up the crate and head out soon after, slowing down when the road gets mudded by the rain. A few miles away from Poznan, Poland, the colonel gets shot in the head, and they are suddenly ambushed by a lone gunman who is part of the Nazi werewolves. After capturing him, they decide to rest to gain the strength to bury their fallen comrade. Later, a group led by Captain Vadim Ilyasov splits up to gather supplies in the village, leaving Brana to take charge of Hitler's remains and the unconscious German soldier. A little later, she gets tired of waiting and decides to look for Ilyasov on her own while Tor looks after the rest of the men. As dusk falls, Ilyasov finds a local tavern and drinks merrily with his men. He later takes advantage of the female barkeeper, terrified by the soldier's presence. Meanwhile, back at the campsite, Tor reads about Operation Werewolf and reveals Joseph Goebbels created it through propaganda to sound more threatening to the Allied nations, even though the name somewhat came from myths about the werewolf. He carries a skull necklace that Iosif Gilev inscribes in Latin as Memento Mori, which means, to remember death, once shouted at Roman soldiers after every victory. Tor does not believe in victorious battles anymore, ever since the Germans spread their concentration camps across Europe. Sometime later, Brana makes it safely to the tavern but discovers Ilyasov sexually assaulting the bar maiden inside a barn. She furiously tells him off as his reckless behavior might endanger the mission, but the drunk official strikes her down and subdues her. Just then, Lukas, a Polish man who speaks German, appears from the darkness with a rifle in hand, ready to shoot Ilyasov. She holds him at gunpoint, so he backs down and explains he came looking around for the source of the disturbance in the area. Suddenly, a poisonous gas cloud breaks out in the tavern, and some men suffocate. Lukas is positive that German werewolves are responsible for the attack as he knows their tactic of burning lichen and mushroom substances to cause hallucinations. Another gas attack happens at the campsite while Tor and the men are sleeping. They succumb to its effects, each seeing apparitions of various people. As Tor moves closer to a masked figure, he realizes it is one of the German werewolves and hurriedly flees to avoid the gunfire. Meanwhile, Iosif paces back and forth to look for what he believes is an actual werewolf killing one of his comrades. Just as he stumbles from shock, Bran arrives with the rest of the men and shoots down the enemy soldier. They find Grigori dead by strangulation as they sweep around for survivors. Soon after they head out, the Nazi werewolves, led by Wolfram Greber, show up at the campsite and track their whereabouts to recover the chest. In the darkness, Tor runs into the terrified bar maiden from the tavern and asks her for help, promising not to hurt her even after she stabs him in the leg. As they walk along the dirt road, she tells him she despises the Germans and the Soviets for their crimes, including killing her parents. He lets her go her way until the Germans appear and shoot them, killing her. Tor fights back but gets knocked out and captured. Meanwhile, Lukas leads Brana and the soldiers to a home of a German couple for them to hide out and plan their next move. To gain their trust, Brana decides to open the chest to show them Hitler's dead body inside. 
she explains that while he was holed up in the bunker under his headquarters in Berlin, he committed suicide by swallowing a cyanide capsule and shooting himself in the head. Lucas then angrily beats his corpse, but they stop him as they must continue preserving his remains with formaldehyde per the instruction of Stalin. The elderly woman Ludmila protests for the body to be burnt as it is too dangerous to hide it while the Germans are still around, but Branna is willing to take the risk. As they carry the corpse inside a shed, Lucas feels puzzled about their mission and expresses his doubts. She makes it clear to him that Stalin wants to look at Hitler's body personally to ascertain his victory against the Nazis. He eventually opens up about being a Volksdeutsche, a person whose language and culture have German origins but do not hold German citizenship. During the Nazi invasion, he was given a choice to join them or be subjected to hard labor, only to discover that his wife was taken to their concentration camp and died. He later fled when the Soviets pushed the Germans back across the border, with a few staying behind to become werewolves invading local villages. Branna offers her sympathy and understands the feeling of being surrounded by wolves. Meanwhile, a badly beaten Tor is brought to Greber, who proceeds to inject his ear with poison while interrogating him about the body of Hitler. As he is about to puncture his eye, one of the scouts brings news on the location of the Soviets. The Germans immediately surround their compound, with Greber ordering them to surrender Hitler's corpse in exchange for their comrade. To take his words seriously, he stabs Tor in the back. Branna then positions herself to snipe the Germans while Lukas and the rest go downstairs to barricade all possible entry points to the house. As he bleeds, Tor finds the opportunity to attack Greber and knock him off balance, just before Branna shoots him in the neck. He runs toward the forest to escape. The werewolves retaliate and gun down the establishment. As the German official lies wounded, he orders his men to storm the compound and take them all by force. In a stunning move, Elasov surrenders in exchange for the location of Hitler's body. With the mission compromised because of his betrayal, Branna has no choice but to hold out long enough for them to make it to the shed and protect the chest. Meanwhile, after stealing a bag full of M24 grenades, Tor throws one in the direction where Greber is hiding but blows up Elasov instead. The German official flees as he tries to mow him down with bullets. The rest of the werewolves continue to fire at the house to draw the Soviets out. Lucas heads towards the basement to protect the elderly couple. They exchange gunfire, with each side unable to make a precise shot until Dimitri heads downstairs and exposes himself while calling for Iosif to fire back. He lays back, bleeding from his chest, when Tor shows up, having run across the field and subduing a few enemy soldiers. Iosif opens the door long enough for one of the werewolves to throw a Molotov inside the house, but luckily, it does not ignite anything. After their comrade bleeds out, they clear the barricades and rush outside towards the shed, only to discover that the body has been dug up and loaded in the German's vehicle. Branna chases after Greber in vain, with Tor following closely behind and demanding her to stop. Though she shoots the truck as it leaves, she is unable to make it stop. Out of options, she walks down the road to follow the tracks but comes across the dead body of the bar maiden and kneels, accepting defeat. The rest of the men catch up, and Tor tells her that the body was taken to a nearby church. She renews her hope and vows to get it back and finish the mission. Meanwhile, Greber and his men set up the corpse for a video opportunity to record evidence that it does not belong to Hitler, even though it is his. The reason for this ruse is to uplift the spirits of the German people and make them believe their leader is still alive. As they start filming, the Soviets throw hallucinogenic bombs inside the church. They open fire by the doorway but see no one come inside. One of the men becomes delirious and sees a boar-like creature enter the church, not knowing it is just Tor wearing a boar headdress. He shoots him, followed by a barrage of fire from the Soviets. Just as Lukas finds an unlit Molotov, a werewolf sneaks up from behind and strangles him until he becomes unconscious. The German soldier locks everyone inside and picks up the Molotov, only for Ludmila's husband to appear and shoot it, burning him alive. The man then checks up on Lukas, who tells him to save the Soviets trapped inside. Branna and Iosif are badly wounded after getting shot as the church starts to engulf in flames. Tor brutally beats up one of the Germans but gets stabbed on his hip. Greber makes a mistake by throwing a liquor bottle at his colleague, distracting him enough for Tor to pierce his neck with a boar tusk and shoot him in the head. He hits another soldier and gets up to confront Greber hiding behind a flipped over table. Suddenly, the German official comes out with his rifle and guns him down. Iosif realizes that only one of them can escape without being seen, so she throws Branna out the window while he gets shot multiple times in the back. Meanwhile, as Tor bleeds out, 
he grabs Hitler's body and drags it down a cellar while destroying the footage recorded earlier, much to Greber's dismay. As he beats down the cellar door furiously, the fire entirely consumes the church, killing him and the comrade while also burning the corpse. Branna and the elderly couple look on as the fire continues to rage. Anna continues her story by saying that their failed mission coincided with German commander Wilhelm Keitel officially surrendering on behalf of the Nazi regime. After the fire douses in the morning, she attempts to look for what remains of Hitler's body, finding only his skull. Not wanting Stalin to be embarrassed by the cover-up, the Soviet Union decided to imprison her for six years in Siberia and bury any evidence presented about Hitler. After her incarceration, she decided to change her identity and visit Lukas in Wroclaw, Poland, who she refers to now as an old friend. She then reveals that he had recovered Tor's skull necklace, which she recognizes as the same around Karl's neck, implying it had been stolen. She takes it from him while telling him that history is not written by the victors but remembered by those that survive it. She then opens the locket and pours the powdered contents into a drink to poison him further. Just before he meets his death, she shows him the contents of a box, implied to be Hitler's skull, serving as the evidence he is looking for, and afterward, she calls emergency services. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.